Walt Bird was an extraordinary man. Mayor Cornwall Bird was sent here by God, I am, I am certain, to rescue the people of Antigua and Barbuda for more than 300 years of servitude and wickedness by people who brought us here for the purpose of creating wealth for them. That was our only purpose here, was to create wealth for other people. Well, Ver Cornwall Bird started a revolution, yes. and it is that revolution that I have been told I have 10 minutes to talk about. First off, I want to tell you that I'm standing not only in the shadow of the Honorable Lester Brian Bird, the greatest Prime Minister we have seen since 1994, and the greatest Minister of Economic Development and Tourism since 1976. And we have present here this morning Ambassador Bags Thomas. Listen, West Indies oil refinery would not have been possible without a man like James Bags Thomas, one of the greatest Antigua and Barbuda diplomats ever to have walked on this planet. And we have with us Rufus Lewis, more than 80 years old. And Mr. Mullen, thank you for keeping Antigua and Barbuda clean for all them years. Yes, yes. And Kelso is here too. Kelso has fought a fight. The fight which you have never seen since 1951. And by the way, George is here. George of the radio is here. Oh, hey. I know some people call themselves Grio. But George has the history. You tell me last night, first, put that in your book. And I intend to put it in the book. Now I want to tell you, Vera Conrad Bird was great. On account of all the great things he did for Antigua and Barbuda. But when you examine Vera Conrad Bird from the inside, that is when you begin to understand how great he was. Last year, when we celebrated the 100th birthday of their Cornwall Bird down at the Multipurpose Centre, the 100th birthday, the Honorable Lester Bryan Bird took to the podium to speak about their Cornwall Bird's greatness. And one of the things that the Honorable Lester Bird said in relation to their Cornwall Bird was that his greatness could be measured in the manner in which he utilized the power that was given to him by the Antigua and Barbuda people to reorder their society. The people of Antigua and Barbuda entrusted their Cornwall bird with power in order to reorder the society. Antigua and Barbuda was established for the sole purpose of making other people wealthy. Their Cornwall bird's purpose was to rearrange conditions in Antigua and Barbuda so that we could become wealthy and not others who had imported us and brought us here. Comrade Gil Christian agrees. Now I want to tell you, having established that the greatness of Vic Conrad Bird has to do with the uses of power, just let us look at three kinds of power that Vic Conrad Bird had. First and foremost, he had people power. The people of Antigua and Barbuda entrusted the leadership, their leadership, with power to change circumstances in Antigua and Barbuda. They gave to VC Bird all the authority he needed in order to change conditions in Antigua and Barbuda. He could call on the people of Antigua and Barbuda anytime. And I hear the Honorable Lester Bird from time to time saying, when you're a leader, you look back, you have to look back, because if you don't have followers, you are no leader. And there, Cornwall Bird could look back, and the thousands of Antiguans and Barbudans were lined up behind him to show that they were in support of his vision, in support of his opportunity to move forward, in support of the drive to change Antigua and Barbuda from one where laborers and workers are exploited to one in which we get to be a part of the decision-making machinery of any enterprise. So he had people power. Then Mayor Conrad Bird decided that it wasn't enough. You needed legislative power. You needed the power of the state to change circumstances, to change the laws. This morning I heard V.C. Bird talking about the 1922 Act, the Masters and Servants Act. It was a wicked piece of legislation that pushed our people back into slavery. The 1922 Labor uh, uh, Act, that 1922 Masters and Servants Act, pushed us back into slavery. 
because it said the following if the master and you had a contract whether in writing or oral and you did not perform to the master's expectations not only not only did you have to pay the master but a magistrate could decide if you should also go to jail the 1922 masters and servants act was an attempt to push us back into slavery via cornwall bird was 13 years old when the masters and servants act was passed in antigua and barbuda 1922 but via cornwall bird became a salvationist he became a self a follower of the salvation army and persons all over antigua and barbuda will take it for granted today but when vehicle was converted in 1917 his mother used to take him to the Anglican church, the big church. They called World Bird, went to the Salvation Army where they were playing on the street because that's where William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, wanted the Salvation Army to express best the love of God. Right on the street, he saved prostitutes and all kinds of things. That was the idea behind the Salvation Army. And Vier Conrad Bird saw those black men dressed in military uniforms and singing songs like onward Christian soldiers marching to the beat. Their Cornwall Bird was converted to the Salvation Army. When he looked at the Anglican priests dressed in their cassocks, they looked feminine to him. Now there's nothing wrong with being feminine, but not if you're a man, I don't think. Their Cornwall Bird saw masculinity in the Salvation Army. He saw an opportunity to do things, save men's souls, and he became a pastor. At 18, in 1927, Vier Cornwall Bird left Antigua and Barbuda to study at the Salvation Army Garrison in Trinidad and Tobago. There he spent two years. And then when he was completed, when that study was completed, he went off to Grenada as a captain in the Salvation Army to save souls in 1930. But Vier Cornwall Bird returned to Antigua in 1931. And from 1931 until 1935, he focused on a family. He married Lydia Doris, Lydia Bryant, on the 22nd, 26th of June, 1935. The 26th of June, 1935, he took his wife and he built a house in Otters in 1934 because you couldn't marry a woman in those days unless you could provide for her a home in which to live. And he built a house right there in Otters. Some people can't afford to build homes now because conditions are so bad and i believe that is why a lot of fellas don't get married you know all them single mothers and so on fellas y'all have to get married vc bird set the standard you have to get married you can't continue to make women pregnant and don't marry them listen to me it's part of the labor party practice you got to marry even once come with gaston Took a bride in 1935 and began making children. Fair Junior was born. Fair Junior was born in 1936, a little more than a year later. And let me tell you, you know, let me tell you, when Fair Conrad Bird was focused upon his family, he didn't pay politics any attention because he was interested in saving men's souls. He was a salvationist. He was a pastor, preacher. He worked as a clerk for commercial. And then he became a manager of Menzies Bakery. When you look in the newspapers of 1935 and 36 and 37, and they're all up there, they're all up there at uh, the National Archives. When you look at the new newspaper, the bakery is advertising, Vier Cornwall Bird is producing the annual statements of profit and loss for Menzies Bakery. For 10 minutes or so, give me five minutes. Listen, by, by 1937, in 1937, Vier Cornwall Bird had a conversion. A man named Marcus Messiah Garvey, a black prophet who rescued the African American people, came to Antigua. First, he passed through here on his way from Nevis on a ship called the Lady Nelson. He spent a Saturday in Antigua, and Harold Tobias Wilson, the editor of the Magnet newspaper at that time, just across from Luke's, Luke's Hardware Store on Church Street was the Magnet newspaper. And Harold Tobias Wilson invited Marcus Garvey to the Magnet newspaper's headquarters. And hundreds, 
Hundreds of Antiguan men and women, young men and women, followed Marcus Garvey all the way up to the Magnet newspaper headquarters. And they asked Har uh, Harold Wilson to let Marcus Garvey come out onto the gallery and look downstairs just so that they could see him. And Marcus Garvey came out onto the platform, the gallery, waved hello. And you and my grandparents were satisfied just in seeing Marcus Messiah Garvey. There Cornwall Brad was in that audience. Harold Tobias Wilson invited Mr. Garvey to come back here. And on the 1st of November, 1937, Mr. Marcus Garvey delivered a speech at the Anglican schoolroom called The Power of Man to Save Himself. Listen, their Cornwall bird was transformed, converted, converted, 1937, the 1st of November, their Cornwall bird suffered another conversion. I say suffered, but in fact, it was the greatest thing to happen to their bird. Their bird realized Something else is required other than Jesus. Something else is required other than a belief in God in order to ensure that your material conditions are improved. And so Vera Cornwall Bird began to pay attention to the politics of Antigua and Barbuda. In 1936, a constitution had been adopted that for the first time allowed voting in Antigua and Barbuda. For the first time in 300 and uh, 300 years, but 19, 1632 they landed here. So in 1937, 300 years, they are voting, voting for the first time. And they have all kinds of qualifications so that the vast majority of people in Antigua and Barbuda cannot vote, cannot take part in elections, can't even become candidates. Fear bird himself couldn't be a candidate, not because he didn't meet the material conditions, because they had to own house and so on, and not because uh, he couldn't be literate, because that was one of the requirements, he had to be literate. But Veerbird was a pastor, preacher. And every constitution of Antigua and Barbuda since 1936, all four of them that I've counted, they all say, if you're a preacher, you can't be a candidate. So, uh, Reverend uh, Prosper, no candidacy for you. And Bishop Dorset, Bishop Dorset, you're out. Yeah. Unless you want to give up the church. Listen. There, Cornwall Bird had a decision to make whether or not he was going to remain a minister of religion or join a secular movement to move Antigua and Barbuda forward. This was Veer Cornwall Bird's dilemma. 1937, the first of November. Veer Cornwall Bird has never forgotten that day. Our independence on the first of November, 1981, is connected to that conversion. So also, I might add. 1493, November the 1st, Columbus, the Europeans, cited Wa Amoni and Wa Dadli for the first time and renamed them Antigua and Barbuda. The 1st of November, 1493. And when Veer Bird, a Veer Cornwall Bird, wanted to demonstrate that Antigua and Barbuda was on a new path, separate from that established by Columbus, he, he selected November the 1st, 1981 for independence. November the 1st, 1981, and November the 1st, 1493. Two separate dates when Antigua and Barbuda's trajectory went off in another direction. So I cite these examples of how Vey Conroy Bird was thinking and what made him great. It was this ability on his part to realize that he had to do more than merely pray and bless people and pray for people. He had to do something about their material conditions. And what happened? On January the 1st, 1939, a man named Walter Citrine delivered another speech at that same St. John's Anglican schoolroom. And Walter Citrine said, listen, you fellas, Walter Citrine is a white man, a Briton, a member of the British Empire. They were, he was being mentioned in the newspapers in England as, as very likely to become the Prime Minister of England. Walter Citrine, here in Antigua and Barbuda, spoke to you and my grandparents and you and my parents at the St. John's Anglican School. Right, Rufus? Yes. And there, Cornwall Bird underwent yet another conversion. And that is when, 15 days later, on January the 16th, 1939, the Antigua Trades and Labor Union was formed. There, Cornwall Bird, there, Cornwall Bird did not become the president, but he was a founding member, Reginald Stevens. 
who had won a seat in the 1937 elections became one became the president of the Antigua Trades and Labor Union by selection and continued to be the president for four continuous years until in January 1944, Vera Cornwall Bird and the youngsters in the Antigua Trades and Labor Union challenged Reginald Stevens. But those who make it out to be that there was some kind of continuous bitterness on the part of V.C. Bird have no idea the kind of love V.C. Bird had for Reginald Stevens. In 1964, when they were celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Antigua Trades and Labor Union, Vera Cornwall Bird and Reginald Stevens' only child marched out to the St. John's Public Cemetery and laid 125 wreaths on the, on the grave of Reginald Sinclair Stevens. Love, love of Reginald Stevens by Vera Cornwall Bird. No matter what they say, about all the bad-mindedness and so on, how uh, V.C. Bird tried to fight off reticence. It was a battle for tomorrow. And Vera Cornwall Bird controlled that battle with the lieutenants, lieutenants in whom he had great faith and who followed him, and followers who knew that Vera Cornwall Bird meant that there would be a new Antigua and Barbuda. The time is running out, and I want to end. I'm going to end by saying, listen, greatness Greatness is not only the material conditions. We have the material conditions as evidence of that greatness, but the greatness also lies within. And the uses to which Vera Cornwall Bird put power is one of the greatest attestations of his ability to resist temptation. Every day in his life, every day in his life, Vera Cornwall Bird prayed the Our Father prayer. And the Our Father prayer said, lead us not into temptation and vc bird was not led into temptation at the end of his life at the end of his life 69 years of hard work continuous hard work on behalf of his family his country and himself vc bird wasn't even worth five hundred thousand dollars i have a lot of young people around here a lot of young people own all kind of things all kind of things and all the lieutenants with him lionel hurst Eddie Lake, Ernest Williams, uh, uh, the, the two Shepherd brothers, they poor, poor, never once did it occur to them that the uses of power was to enrich themselves. And you have a bunch of vagabonds today who believe that the way to riches is through government. And so you get fences costing $64 million. We have to thank Comrade Marvin Joseph for exposing that. $64 million worth of fences. I want to tell Dame Louise, let the report, not yours, let it go. Because we know you made a fool of yourself, you and Baldwin Spencer, by starting this tribunal. Here, Conrad Bird would be crying, but instead he's saying to us, fight the good fight with all your mind. Fight the good fight with all your mind. Fight on, fight on. The unity of labor is the salvation of our people. Amen. Yeah. Yeah.